thing flipped up on its side. I checked everything. I made little white dots where I've got to do work. It includes cleaning and welding, and then I have to clean the whole chassis. I've got to get all the loose crap off. Get rid of as much rust as I can before I put this. Like I have this rust converter. I've been talking about like all the time. <laughs> Once that's on, it's supposed to turn everything like a dark color and get really hard. Basically stop it from rusting, giving me a paintable service. Paintable surface. I went through it real quick, put little dots everywhere. I got to do a bit of work. Like I said, that means cleaning and welding, making things stronger, making it all sealed up. And then I can rust convert the bottom. And then I'm probably going to bring it back down on the ground because I have a little bit of body work to do and stuff up on top. And I don't want to paint it until I'm done all my body work and welding and grinding, but I do want to get this part out of the way. So really there's nothing to it, but do it. So I'm going to get to work and see how much I can get done today. All welded up boys now i gotta do the long boring part of passing the flap disc i set myself up with a brand new one hi so i'm gonna go to town on this chassis underneath and then pass the steel brush and make sure everything's good and clean so i can lay down that rust converter then i've got a little work to do inside of the cab i'm gonna hop inside there uh, there's a big ass hole in the roof <laughs> figure this out i think i'm gonna lay some fiberglass on the inside I'm gonna lay some fiberglass in here where my hand is hopefully and then be able to put some just body filler on that to clean it right up. And then I'm going to have to work on the inside here. I've got to clean up all the loose rust pieces. I can maybe do some of that rust converter inside here. It'd be much easier when it's on its side. But I don't think I really need to show you the whole process on the next part. I'll flip the camera around. We'll do a quick walk by. You can see what it looks like now. And then I'll show you after. So this is before. And... Basically, I just had to knock all the rust off of it to be able to put this rust converter deal on it. There's still rust on it. That's just the color of the metal right now. I knocked off the surface rust, anything flaky, anything that's gonna be dusty or potentially ruin the paint or flake off as soon as any kind of paint gets on it, that's all gone. Everything that's left is nice, good, and solid. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start brushing down that rust converter on the bottom. I already, I'll show you. I already went to town inside here to get rid of all the stuff that's loose all the hard to reach spots. It's just really easy and convenient when it's upside down like this. So I'm gonna do inside with that rust converter as well. And then I'll be able to try to figure a solution for this hole. That's probably gonna be some fiberglass, but I might as well protect all the metal first. <laughs> down before painting with a damp cloth. I actually tried right there and you can't even tell really. Anyway, so I'm pretty pleased with how it goes on and it's supposed to do its job. It's a rust converter. It's supposed to take any, any sign at all of rust, turn it into something more solid. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do as much of the chassis as I can and then lay it down back on its frame like it should be. Then I'll give it the once over once again and really check out what, uh, make sure I got everywhere. I think it's a good idea to let it try. I've never done this before, so if you've done it, just let, let me know in the comments and stuff. I think uh, the best bet's gonna be let that stuff dry, come out later after it's dry and start doing the body work. I got a few holes to patch. And so I'm gonna be using probably a little bit of fiberglass, maybe a little bit of Bondo, and there's gonna be some welding of sheet metal. So I'm just gonna get to it and then update you guys again later, because it's just gonna be more the same like, brush and stuff. Woo!
much, much later. I uh, finally done putting all the rust coating, converter, whatever on this thing. Now I brought it back down so I can get all the parts of it. I wasn't gonna do initially the whole body. I was gonna do a bit of body work on it first, but at least the metal will be stable when I do my body work. Uh, I'm gonna let this dry overnight, see what happens. It might not be the right way to do it, but this, I'm, I'm gonna try it out. I've never done this before. The instructions, they don't really tell you much. It just says before you paint to wipe it down with a damp cloth and water. So I'm thinking if it cures and then I get it with water, it's not too bad. It's gonna be like, the metal's gonna be good and strong and I think that's the idea, right? So tomorrow I'll get in here and I'll clean it up and put it up on jack stands proper and then we start doing body work. And then after body work is paint. It's gonna be so nice to see this thing one color or maybe two colors, but it's gonna be good to see it done up like that because it's been so long where it looks like just a bunch of pieces of metal welded together that eventually oxidized and then rusted everywhere. So it's like a, it's a horrible, horrible mess. And I'm really looking forward to seeing it come together. So after it's painted, I can start working on all the parts, getting new bushings, new bearings, all that stuff, cleaning up the subframes, making them look really nice, maybe painting them, powder coating them. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> I laid some fiberglass down on certain problem spots. And it's not necessarily to be the finished part, but it's gonna hold some putty and filler that I'm gonna have to put in those little spots. There's a few marks, a few spots in the corners of the windshield, front and back. And then there was that massive hole that was in the roof. Hopefully that took care of all the problems. So next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out some sheet metal and I'm gonna make a patch for the behind the driver door. And then after that, I'm gonna get to work on the Bondo and hopefully get all that body work done. She'll be ready for a paint tomorrow, I'm hoping. You didn't see it like this, you didn't see this happen, but I took some steps off camera, unfortunately. I kind of took a break from just filming all this stuff. Went to work. Let's take a look at where it's at right now. So as you can see, the fabrication is pretty much done. All the heavy duty cutting, grinding, welding, fitting, all the design, all that stuff, all the dirty work basically is complete. Now I went ahead and I painted the chassis, but I took steps before that. I cleaned it off really good with the brush, with the sander, with anything Anything that's gonna take grit, rust, anything like that off. All the rust is completely gone, got into every nook, cranny, every little corner. And then I coated the entire chassis and body with a rust converter. This is the product I used. I picked it up at the local car parts. It was pretty cheap. I believe this entire four liters, 1.06 US gallon 
was about $45 at most after tax. Like in a previous video, I flipped the entire chassis up on its side. That way I can get underneath it and work through all the stuff there, get underneath the frame, clean it up really nice, get rid of any kind of rust, and then put that rust converter on it, which should prevent the rust from happening any further, if any does. I don't think it will because it's all been cleaned really well. I put that rust converter on the tubes and everything for the roll cage, and then there was a cleaning process to get that off after. I let it sit a little longer than I should have, and that in turn forced me to use the brushes and scotch bright pads and all that kind of stuff to get the excess conversion stuff off because it, it gets kind of flaky and where it's rusted it, you can see how it converts and what it does. Uh, I'm not going to go too deep into that. I don't have any footage of that, but you guys get the idea, right? That scratch just happened. The bash bar fell over on it, but uh, there was a lot of body work that I had to do. Right here in the roof, there was a massive hole. Well, I fiberglassed underneath, so you don't really see it too much. On the sides here, you can't see really where they were because I did a pretty decent job, but there was a big groove that's in here on these El Caminos, and that's where the roof skin attaches. This car was originally a vinyl roof car, so there was a lot of uh, work to do on the roof here. The back window section is kind of sloppy. You'll notice the two different tones, the different colors right here. That's because this is actually all trim clad. After I did the body work, I sprayed the primer on it. It's a high fill primer. As you can see on this side, I still have a lot of work to do. Uh, I filled in the hole that was there, but here you can see there's some lines. That's another seam that's in the body panel stock. Uh, got a little damage here. The roof and everything is good. It's a little dirty now, so it looks a bit off. Aside from that bodywork, I uh, threw some fiberglass over here last minute because these ports, whatever these holes were, originally would go into the engine bay because my firewall is so chopped up. It's uh, this would go directly into the, the cab of the car and that's where it would come through. What are you barking about? Trying to record a YouTube video. You want this? Yeah. After I got the body all primed up with that really high fill primer, because keep in mind that I'm going to do body work on it later, I put a lot of coats of the high fill figuring that I could use that to sand and fix any imperfections. And once the other panels get on it too, I'm sure I'm gonna to have to straighten up a bit with the doors and with the fenders in the front and back, line everything up. There's gonna be some body work to do in there, perfecting the lines and making them as best as I can make them. As soon as that was all primed, it was time to paint the chassis. Once again, with proper cleaning tools, metal brushes on the drill, on the grinder, flap discs and scotch brights and everything else, uh, that little plumber's tape trick that I do to clean the piping. I got everything all cleaned out. and put a nice fresh coat of paint everywhere on it. Inside and out. The bottom, except for right there. I missed that spot. Underneath the car is completely painted. The firewall inside out, trans tunnel, the floors, the whole deal. Now, believe it or not, like this looks pretty decent. The camera will focus on it properly. These pipes look all right. There's no brush marks on it. I didn't spray it. I put this all on with a brush. Kind of seems like the trim clad will like mold itself. It'll flow out kind of like a powder coat deal, right? It'll, it flows out really nice and then it totally eliminates all the brush strokes. It kind of levels itself out across everything and gives a nice glossy finish, which is easy to clean. Uh, it's not going to see any kind of weather like winters and salt on the road. So I'm not too worried about rust coming through. Now trim clad supposed to be like a rust proof paint, but I've painted trailers and stuff with it and it never really works out. It always ends up flaking off and looking totally horrible. So for this, I think it's gonna stand the test of time because it's gonna see racetracks and nice days when it has its day. Basically, the next step is gonna be getting all my components together, my suspension, the drivetrain, the motor, transmission, all the wiring harness and everything else. Start cleaning that stuff up. I gotta order new bearings, new bushings, and all that fun stuff. New brake lines, new fuel lines, probably a lot of new wires and connectors. Set everything up and make it look nice and clean. I'm gonna powder coat a bunch of parts. I'm gonna have to make a powder coat oven that's big enough to hold half these parts, but that'll definitely be on this channel. From now on, it starts, I think, to get really fun. So right now, I'm just kind of reorganizing the shop so I can get to work without being in clutter. And with the addition of a bunch of new toys in the shop now and a new bunch of new stuff I'm gonna throw on the channel just because it's fun, I wanna make sure I get this truck, this El Camino, in a spot where I can just easily pull it out when I feel like working on it and just go to town. Like I said, everything now is gonna be kind of fun stuff to do, so it's a lot of brand new, fresh, clean parts, new bearings, new bushings, try to get some nice top of the line stuff that looks really good all bolted together. 
and start piece by piece like a big puzzle just kind of bolting it together. I got a bunch of other things, kind of easy little projects to work on this winter that are going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to try to be a little artistic with stuff and get a little creative and just, it's all about enjoying it. Like I, I turned it into a job by accident by trying to do like a lot of work in a short period of time and then it ended up being a point where I stopped enjoying it. So now the name of the game is just to do what I'm passionate about and just not really, I'm not focusing anymore on uh, views, the popularity contest at YouTube, if you will. I don't even want to talk about it, just like positive vibes, dude. Well, that's about it for this video, guys. Now I'm just going to appropriately, now I'm just going to appropriately put this someplace where it's going to be easy to get to, easy to work on. And I think I'm going to give it a little break for a little while. I took about a month off that wasn't on film after doing the body work and everything on it. So now it's just time to get back to enjoying things. See you guys in the next video.